Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. And today we got a 2005 Honda Element here that uh, Jake couldn't figure out. Uh, my theory on the whole situation is the valves need adjusting and that they are too tight uh, causing his issues. So today we've got the valve cover off and we're going to adjust the valves. So on all data here, I've got the Honda element pulled up and on the search bar up here, I just topped in valve clearance and selected valve clearance under the adjustments. And um, basically got the procedure here and it starts off by removing the cylinder head cover. I already got that done. Uh, it does say temperature less than 100 degrees. This has been sitting here overnight, so well under that. Um, and then it wants us to set number one piston to top the top dead center, uh, the punch mark A on the valve uh, timing cover actuator or valve timing control actuator. I can't talk this morning. Um, and punch mark on the exhaust camshaft sprocket should be at the top. So it's basically just talking about this picture here and. I just do the old school method of paying attention to where my intake valve is and where my exhaust valve is in relation. And I just stick a long extension down in there. And uh, I've already got a wrench on here. Well, I had one until it fell off. Let me get that back on there. All right, got my wrench back on the crank pulley down there. No, you're not gonna be able to see that. But anyways, I just like to rotate this until I see my extension come all the way up and right now we're starting to come back up right there that's pretty close and set my ratchet back wrench back down there and let's see I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see this or not um, Get my camera here. You can see the punch mark here and right there. So they are up. It also shows in the picture some lines on the crank pull or the cam pulleys, cam gears, whatever. They're pretty close to being lined up. I could probably rotate it just a little bit more, but it's pretty close. And now we just use a filler gauge and uh, check that. <clears throat> we gotta know what the spec is though. So once we get uh, our TDC set, select the correct thickness of feeler gauges for the valves you're going to be checking. We're gonna be doing all of them and I have it wrote down on a piece of paper here. Basically arrows, front of engine. Uh, exhaust valves and intake valves so I can keep up with a before number and uh, the after number. I mean ideally we're going to shoot for the same after number on every one of them but I want to know what these before numbers are. So uh, our intake thickness should be um, a 0.21 to 0.25 millimeter I have a feeler gauge that is in metric, so we'll be using the millimeters instead of the thousandths of an inch. Uh, if you're using a thousandths of an inch feeler gauge, you're going to want between nine thousandths and ten thousandths of an inch. Um, so ideally, you probably want to shoot for that middle number of nine, um, I, I would assume. So on the exhaust, we're going to do a 0.28 millimeter or a point or to a point three two millimeter or an eleven thousandths to a thirteen thousandths so ideally you probably want to shoot for a twelve thousandths uh, feeler gauge and that's what you're going to want to set all these valves to and this is going to talk about how you insert the feeler gauge adjust the screws and everything um, it's been a long time since so I've adjusted valves 
I can't remember how long it's been. And it was definitely before I was ever a, a technician. <laughs> so it was, would have definitely been on one of my own personal Hondas back 15 years ago, probably, or longer. So anyways, that's the procedure. Um, basically, it's going to walk you through kind of adjusting these things. And yeah, that's what we're going to do. So these feeler gauges actually have the metric and standard on it. See, it's been so long since I used them, I didn't even remember them having that. Uh, but anyways, we're going to be shooting for this 9 thousandths or 0.229 millimeter for our intakes. And our exhaust, we're going to be shooting for a 12 thousandths here. So we're going to see just how tight or loose these valves are. All right, so here we are on number one, and I've got the eight thou, and we're going to just slide this down in between the valve stem and the um, adjustment screw here and see how tight this is, if I can get it in there. Uh, I should have got a set of angled ones brought with me this morning because it is not wanting to go in there. There we go. So, eight thou fits pretty well. So that one is not tight. such an angle in there is kind of aggravating so eight thous fit that is on it would be on our tight side so let's see uh, how thick we can get in there had to do some rearranging get you guys in a better spot because you kept wanting to fall over so there's a nine thousandths that is still good let's go to 10 now and 10 is our limit um, so ideally we want to probably be able to stick a 10 in there but not an 11 and here's an 11 So 11 does not go. All right, let's check this other side. Does 11 go in this one? Uh, not really, they kind of want to start, but they don't go. So looks like our clearance is 10 thousandths, which is in our spec and it's definitely not tight. So basically going to repeat this process for every one of them and yeah, if, uh, if I have something come up that is strange, I'll let you guys know and of course I'll be writing all these down on my paper and uh, we'll go from there. Well, my first exhaust valve here having some trouble with it. Yeah, that's a one and a half foul filler gauge. That's the thinnest one I have, and I can't get it under that one. This one I got with a uh, nine thousandths filler gauge. This one, I can't get anything under it. Now you and it's really hard to get down in here, so I've been using a mirror to uh, kind of look to make sure I'm getting between the adjustment and the valve stem and like all it will do is just get barely under the edge of it. It won't actually slide completely through it. So maybe, maybe uh, Ivan's on to something here. This is going to take way too long to do this. I think I'm just going to go through and crack them all loose and just adjust them. I mean, exhausts are already tight. And I have a feeling maybe somebody's 
done the intakes before because they're the easy ones. I don't know. I'm just going to crack them all loose and just go through them all. Um, it's taking too long to try to measure each one of them. Uh, this already proves that I've got tight ones. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, pretty much just got a couple of wrenches here, 10 mil. That's what fits the uh, the tops of these things. And everything's, of course, really tight in here. So I might have to go get a different wrench. But, yeah. You crack them loose. You slide your feeler gauge in there. And uh, you kind of just adjust the screw while you are basically sliding your your feeler gauge around so this is hard to do one-handed but so you won't be able to and I slipped out you won't be able to slide your gauge back and forth and I need a Caleb you guys get the idea. You, you basically just slide your feeler gauge back and forth as you're tightening the screw very slowly until your feeler gauge basically starts to stick. And then you hold the flat head so your screw doesn't turn and tighten your nut back down to lock it. That's the gist of it. So, so I got this one adjusted and you can see now our 12,000 fits in there nice and snug. It does kind of bind, but it's just because it's at a stupid angle. And I don't have the curved feeler gauges. I do somewhere. I just don't know where they're at. So I'm going to keep going through all these and get them all adjusted. I should also note that when you're doing these exhaust ones on these engines it's hard to see this but the exhaust both exhaust are tied together so you actually have to crack both nuts loose and back off both screws to adjust them if you have one side that's too tight and you start trying to adjust the other side it's going to throw you off so you got to crack both nuts loose because it's all on one rocker arm or whatever they call these things on these engines. So crack both nuts loose, uh, do both of them at the same time basically. And yeah. All right, so I adjusted these and those so far. And I just wanna give you a comparison. If you look at how the cam lobes are, you can find similar setups where like the valve or the cam isn't putting any pressure on the rocker. So you can kind of compare them like, like these cam angles pointing that way. These, the lobe is pointing this way. So there's nothing, no pressure on these rollers. I can actually roll them with my finger. So if we just give this a little wiggle test, you can kind of see just that little bit of play, that little bit of movement, that's our clearance. So, do this one here. And you can hear the tap, hopefully. And then if we go over here to these, I've not done these, but they have a very similar amount of play. If anything, they're a little looser than, than what I have here. Now let's go over to the exhaust that we had tight. Okay, let me try to get you where you can kind of see. You can see our, our cam lobe is pointing this direction, so there's no pressure on here. And hopefully you guys can see how much movement we got here. Okay, now this cam lobe is pointing up and away, so there's no pressure on this rocker either and let me get some light over here now if we wiggle this one I mean it almost doesn't move you can't even really hear it tapping at all it's very very tight compared to this one 
So maybe we're on to something here. Maybe. All right, we got it all put back together here. Everything's put back together. Coils are in, all bolted down, everything. Got the scan tool hooked up. So place your best now. Have we solved Jake's six or eight month long problem child car? Well, let's start it up and see what happens with our data. Uh, you can see our long-term trims right now, they're still at negative 16. So I'm hoping to see my short terms pretty much start correcting this as soon as I get up to temperature. So let's see. Shouldn't take but just a minute or so for the uh, the temp and the oxygen sensor to start working. And there we go. We got a short term going positive seven, positive six, positive three. So we are in the positives. Is it going to correct everything? I don't know, it's dropping back down. We are in closed loop. Still going down. Let's see uh, if I put it in drive, or are we going to stall? Not yet. So let's keep watching this to see what happens with it. You see our intake manifold vacuum down at 4.8. That's basically the same as what it was before, but we are idled up still. Our engine RPM is still at a thousand. So let me get this thing, get the hood shut, get it outside and uh, let it get up to temperature and see if we see anything different. Right now our short terms are kind of starting to come up just a little bit. They're at zero, whereas before they were still trying to pull fuel out. So I don't know yet. We'll see. Still don't like these fuel trims. These fuel trims are still pretty negative. We're still heating up though. Idle's coming down just a little bit. We're down to 850. Uh, temperature is about 160 degrees. So I'm not real sure. I can tell you that like whenever I just take it and shift it into a gear, it feels better. I, I don't feel it bogging like I was. And before I could just kind of move it around and get it to, uh, to stumble. And we're not stumbling at all. So it's looking promising, except I still don't, I still don't like these fuel trims. I would have liked to see my short terms go positive and slowly start pulling that long term back up. Let's turn some air on, give it a little bit more of a load. Let's drive it around, see what happens. See, driving my short term does pull. Well, it's back down to negative five. So weird. So far, it seems like it has fixed the stall. Let's 
So that's looking promising that the stall has gone away. Well, I've been letting it sit here and just idle for a while. I did go in and clear the codes to basically reset the fuel trims. And as you can see here, long term is pulling back down. Um, so is this an issue or is this within acceptable range? I'm not really sure on Honda, but as you can see, it, it still is adjusting down. So I don't know quite yet where the bottom of it is. Um, so uh, it looks like we've still got a fuel trim issue to me. But Hondas are weird to me. I'm not good with Japanese cars, particularly Nissans, as, as y'all know. I don't understand Japanese very well. So, yeah, to me, it, I don't know that it's fixed. Um, it didn't do any of the stall or stumbling that it normally does, but also, as long as I've had this, I've had days where it wouldn't do that. It wouldn't stumble and stall. Um, but I always kind of seemed like I had these, these fuel trim issues. So as of right now, it's still unknown whether this has fixed it or not. 